This is our first annual, however, Chamber Policy Conference, uh, which is what you are all here for. And the reason behind doing it differently this year is that this is the quirky 11th year out of a 12-year cycle where there are no elections. Stop the cheering. Some of you are pleased about that. But, um, but so we wanted to make sure that the hobnob opportunity continues. The networking that follows with the reception afterwards is still uh, available to you. But we also wanted to add a little bit of uh, flair to it, if you will, some substance to it. And that's the reason behind the policy conference and um, what we'll be doing uh, in terms of this afternoon. We have a tremendous speaker. I had the pleasure of spending time with him last night. We did a Segway tour of Indianapolis, which I'll talk about in just a moment. But uh, Jeff Speck has some great things to uh, share with you about what he knows about cities and I think what he's learned about Indianapolis in particular. Let me tell you just one thing about the Chamber, if I could. The Chamber is bringing you a policy conference like this because uh, we have been at the forefront of the changes here in Indianapolis since 1890 when we were founded. Here's a little tidbit to back up what I'm talking about. In 1929, the Indianapolis Chamber of Commerce, through a committee, picked the current site for the Indianapolis airport. So think about that. 1929, out where it is, there were bears and lions and giraffes out there and stuff. So, uh, and we were able to think in terms of where we needed to be in the next uh, 100 years or so. So that's the kind of thing that the Indianapolis Chamber has been doing. And I'm very pleased and proud to be a part of that. So I'd like to, uh, nothing like this ever happens without our presenting sponsors. Very pleased to have uh, the folks that you've seen up on the screen, but in particular State Farm and Baker and Daniels, who are great community citizens, and we really appreciate their participation. And before I bring Andre, Andre Cole up here from State Farm, I would just urge all of you to turn off the devices that you have, put them on stun, whatever you need to do. But uh, for the uh, sake of the rest of the folks here, if you turn off your cell phones, that would be great. Now, would you please help me bring Andre Cole to the microphone with a big round of applause. Thank you, Roland. Good afternoon. That's pretty good for after lunch. Really, good afternoon. And on behalf of State Farm Insurance, I first of all want to say thank you. And State Farm Insurance Companies is proud to again be the presenting partner for the Greater Indianapolis Chamber of Commerce Hobnob event. At State Farm, we believe democracy is not a spectator sport. Your participation at this afternoon's event uh, regarding the conference and later today, this evening at the reception, also demonstrates the fact that you believe in getting involved in creating public policy. Also, we appreciate you learning more about the issues that affect Indianapolis and, quite frankly, the entire state of Indiana. These issues that shape the business climate where we all work, the schools in which our children attend, and the communities where we all live. Through State Farm's community development investments, we continue towards an Indianapolis that's stable, healthy, and a viable community for each and every person. On behalf of State Farm Insurance, I again want to thank you for attending today's event regarding the policy conference and this evening's activities at the reception. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andre, and State Farm. We really appreciate your support. Uh, it is now my pleasure to bring up a partner of the chamber uh, and really a partner of our community. Brian Payne, many of you know, has been with the Central Indiana Community Foundation since 2000, November of 2000. Before that, the UCLA grad and uh, California native, been with IRT. And I mentioned a Segway tour before. We went on the cultural trail, which I hope you've heard something about. But this is really uh, the brainchild of Brian Payne. Uh, when you talk about leadership, and Brian has been much decorated for this in our community, when you talk about vision, uh, you need only go look at the cultural trail. It is really remarkable. By the way, if you haven't done this Segway tour, it is really cool. 
it is a whole heck of a lot of fun, uh, and you will see, everybody says this, but you will see Indianapolis from an entirely different perspective, and you'll begin to understand truly the full consequences and impact that the cultural trail is going to have. It will make Indianapolis distinguishable, I believe, from every other community, not just in our country, but around the world. And the person who gave birth to that, to that is one Brian Payne. Please help me in welcoming Brian to the microphone. Uh, thank you very much, Roland. I appreciate being here. Um, I'm very excited about the whole day. Very excited to hear Jeff Speck talk. We had a great time last night uh, segueing around uh, the cultural trail in downtown, and then we had a few more beers and then kept segueing around downtown at night. And uh, if you think segueing is fun, do it on a couple of beers. And, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. It's bad. You should not do that. There's no press here. Right? We don't have any media partners. Um, it's my great pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Jeff Speck. Um, I'll tell you a little story about how I got to know about him and his incredible book that he co-authored, which is uh, Suburban Nation, The Rise of Sprawl and the Decline of the American Dream. Is, uh, we, we're, Roland and I and many others are involved in lots of meetings in the community. And uh, there's this Harmony Initiative that's a very wonderful initiative about creating more uh, consciousness about our great midtown neighborhoods of Meridian Kessler and uh, Butler Tarkington and Broad Ripple. And the two leaders of that are here with us today. It's uh, Kathy Shorter and Cindy Zweber Free. And they actually discovered this great book. They bought 100 copies and sent it to you know, legislators and policymakers. And Roland and myself each got one, and we were both, all of us were knocked out by this book. And we've learned that it's one of the most important books about urban design, city planning uh, in, in, in the last number of generations. And so I was very excited that uh, Roland and the chamber were bringing Jeff Speck. Uh, Jeff is a city planner, he's an uh, architectural designer, and he advocates internationally for smart growth and sustainable design. He was the, the Director of Design at the National Endowment for the Arts from 2003 to 2007. And there he oversaw the Mayor's Institute on City Design, helping mayors figure out how to build more sustainable, better designed communities throughout America, and created the Governor's Institute on Community Design. Before he joined the National Endowment of the Arts, Mr. Speck spent 10 years as Director of Town Planning at DPZ, which is a leading practitioner of new urbanism. Um, Sur uh, Suburban Nation has continuously been in print since it came out in 2000. They're about to uh, put out uh, a new 10th anniversary edition. It sold about 100,000 copies, which is incredible for a kind of a policy book that's so uh, smart and, uh, and uh, forward thinking. And his new book is about to come out, Smart Growth Manual. He's also a contributing editor to Metropolis Magazine, which is a really cool, hip magazine that many of you probably know. So it's my great pleasure again to introduce you to Jeff Speck.